In this video, the result of my attempts to improve the rigidity of the column of the Proxon FF500BL milling machine. Although the manufacturer describes the column as massive, solid, it is in fact a thin-walled extruded aluminum tube, and I suspect that especially in the highest position of the milling head, the resistance to torsion of this column is lower than desirable. In any case, it is always desirable to know whether or not significant improvements are achievable with simple means and some research. I hope you will be inspired by my somewhat unusual approach to this problem and enjoy this video. Here in the Netherlands we have a saying, Maten is waiten, gissen is missen, in English. When you make measurements you have knowledge, when you guess, things go wrong. So I first measured the deflection at various points of the milling machine. These points were carefully chosen to determine as much as possible solely the bending of the column in x, y and z directions, as well as the deflection of the business end, which consists of composite deflections in multiple directions. For this I used a 10 kg lead ball that exerted a reproducible pulling force via a rope attached to a certain point of the machine. The measurement of the deflection relative to the center of the bed was done with a Mitotoyo indicator with a 2 micron scale. Each measurement was repeated three times and the results are shown in this overview. For now the X, Y and C1 deflections are the most important. X and Y provide insight into the bending of the column, while C1 tells me more about the torsion. Naturally, the values are significantly lower with a fully lowered milling head. However, it would be very nice if the C1 deflection in particular could be reduced because it is too high for me by about a tenth of a millimeter at 10 kilograms of force. To estimate whether strengthening the column could have sufficient effect, I made a strength calculation of the bending and torsion of the column, based on some standard formulas from strength theory. You can see the spreadsheet with the calculations here. Pause the video if you want to study it longer. These are the most important calculated and measured values. The values are reasonably similar although the deflection in the x-direction is clearly greater than calculated, while in the y-direction less deflection is seen than calculated. The complex shape of the column may play a role in this. Because this table shows that practice and theory do not completely disagree with each other, I have a starting point to see whether strengthening the column makes sense. An obvious choice for this is epoxy concrete, a mixture of stone and cast resin. If I fill the column with this, the resistance to bending and torsion should increase. In addition, the mass of the filling will also counteract resonances, because with the current thin walls the column may have similarities with a Tibetan singing bowl. For this concrete mixture I assumed a shear modulus for epoxy concrete, estimated quite modestly at 2 gigapascals. I then calculated what the resistance to bending and torsion would be if the column of my milling machine were completely filled with this material. The results are shown in the third column, and let me hope for a roughly halving of the deflections. That seems very worthwhile to me, so I decided to strengthen the column. Because I wanted to take the machine apart for a good maintenance anyway, this wasn't too much extra work. The method I followed to determine the ideal composition of the epoxy concrete is quite different from the more experimental and sometimes very random methods used in other YouTube videos. So here's a brief explanation. Sand consists largely of silicon dioxide, a hard material, much less flexible and stronger than pure epoxy resin. So as much well-glued sand as possible in the epoxy concrete is the best choice. In addition, you want to prevent air in the concrete under any circumstances, because that weakens it. You also want small particles of sand and not larger pebbles like I saw in some videos. This is because a small grain has much more surface area and is therefore glued together more intensively by the resin. And then the choice becomes easy. All air in the sand must simply be replaced with casting epoxy. To determine how much epoxy by volume was needed to take up all the space between the sand, I did a simple test. A container was filled to the brim with a known volume and weight of sand. Then water was poured in until no more drop could fit. It was easy to calculate from the weight increase that 42 volume percent casting resin had to be added to the sand. 
This way I guarantee the absence of air bubbles and a weaker column due to too much casting resin, while I can rely on all sand grains tightly packed and glued together. Now I know enough. So let's get started.
Five days after pouring the resin I redid all the measurements three times. The result is slightly disappointing to me. I had hoped for most deflections to be halved or better, of course for those at the highest position of the milling head. The result is an improvement of approximately 40%. It should be noted that the resin can still harden for a number of days. So maybe I will still achieve the goal in a few weeks. I will post a pinned message if there is a significant improvement. Okay, that's it for this time. I hope this video was worth watching, and to see you next time.